Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Glossy Philosophy. My name is Jansen Binman and today you are tuned in for a tribute tutorial, a tribute to Judy Garland. And a few months ago I had someone really special pass away and I wanted to do something special on my channel because she would have loved this channel. So something that we had in common was our love of musicals and Judy Garland. So this is a look from Based on Easter Parade with Judy Garland and Fred Astaire, so stay tuned. Let's get started with the tutorial. So I've already prepped my face by washing my face and doing skincare. You can tell that I've put on quite a bit of oil. So we are ready to prep our face before we put on foundation. At Sephora, they would always say, it's kind of like when you paint a wall, you need to prime it. So we're basically priming our face. And we're just going to start with the NARS Tinted Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base. I love this one. It seems to work no matter what skincare I'm using, no matter what time of year it is. It just holds onto those shadows and also helps them stay more true to their actual color. Now, Judy Garland, at least in Easter Parade, is wearing hardly any makeup, which is I think a little shocking because not only is she on film, but she's the star of the show, right? And I think the interesting thing that they do is when they pair her against the other woman, Nadine, her character, she's definitely super glamorous and wearing some really pretty movie star makeup, and Judy Garland is just so... I don't want to say basic, but she's just like very minimal, and I think it just adds that little bit of freshness to her character versus the like movie star Nadine. Maybe I should do her look too. <laughs> so we are going to continue priming or correcting with Bobbi Brown's corrector. And in the movie Easter Parade, if you haven't seen it, it's so cute. Um, Judy Garland ends up wearing a lot of suits with the help of Fred Astaire's character. So that is why we are kind of dressed in a suit today. For final pictures, I will pull my hair back in more of a Judy Garland style. We're going to go in with Rock and Coal. Tight line our eyes. I am barely lifting up my lid. It's not a tug, it's not a pull, it's just like a little pop. Your eye area is so, the skin around that is so delicate and as you get older it just becomes thinner and thinner and thinner. So you really want to be cautious and aware of what products you're using and I, when I was doing like Bobbi Brown counter, I would always recommend to older clients that maybe they wanted to do a cream shadow because they're easier to blend out and you're not getting that consistent back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, even with a fluffy brush. So if you are on the older side or you know someone who's a little bit older who's just getting into makeup or wants to learn some tips and tricks, I think cream shadows is a really great way to go, especially if you're wearing them on a daily basis. We are going to continue with powders and kind of do the complexion. As I said before, her eyeshadow in the movie is very minimal. The look is definitely a lip look. So we are going to go forward with complexion. Using the Giorgio Armani 4.5 and then going in with the Duo Fiber brush. Doing tapping motions and then blending out motions. And I will also go back in with my finger. And then we are going to go in with foundation, a pump on the hand, and then putting a big old dot mostly in the center of my face and then blending out. So true to makeup of that time period, her complexion is a little bit on the heavy side, but that's just where the technology of makeup was at that point, especially for foundation. 
so I don't feel like I could really see her skin. It's not about the glow. It's not about letting your skin shine through or anything like that. It is about blocking those giant hot lights and keeping you from looking sweaty. You also needed a thicker makeup just, again, because of those lights. And you do, like if you've ever been under hot lights before or on stage for community theater or actual theater, anything like that, you know how hot it gets and you can kind of feel like you're melting a little bit. So theater and movie makeup, especially back then, was a little bit different from like your everyday. I watched this amazing Lisa Eldridge tutorial where she listened to, it almost sounded like a gramophone. <laughs> of a, I think it was Max Factor actually, who was talking about how to do makeup like a movie star. And he said that you always want to make sure that you match your nails to your lipstick and not the other way around. So even though in Easter Parade, I couldn't, I didn't really see nail polish on Judy Garland. We are kind of going for that anyways. We're not going to do highlighter because again, it's a pretty matte, kind of pancakey look. So now we are just gonna go in with a nice, big, fluffy brush, the Blush and Powder Brush from MAC. Go into our pale yellow powder. And we are going to start kind of flattening ourselves out a little bit. I feel like during that time period, the powdering and the blush are really important. But there is a little bit of a level of flatness to the face. Now, I'm just assuming that a little bit of sculpting was going on, even though it's really hard to tell. So we are going to add just a little bit of bronzer. The great thing about doing these kinds of looks is that it just inspires you to rethink about your makeup and, you know, maybe do it in a different way, see yourself in a new light. I know for me, it's always, you know, you have your one way of doing your makeup and then you try something else and sometimes it's a little shocking, but sometimes you figure out that like, oh, maybe I don't need as much eyeliner or maybe I don't need as much eyeshadow to get my point across or get my beauty opinion across. Maybe just a little bit of here, a little bit of there, or it's a really good lesson on how to make one feature really pop. Whereas at least a few years ago, it felt like everything needed to pop. And so this is a nice kind of step back to one focus of the face. All right, we are going with Lisa Eldridge's Luxuriously Lucent Lipstick in Wonder Wheel. <laughs> that was a mouthful. Such a pretty color. So great for spring and so great for summer. Summer especially. Now Judy Garland's wearing this like orangey red lipstick. I don't have one. I do have Palazzo, which is definitely more on the blue side. So we're doing Wonder Wheel and then we're going to do a little bit of Go Lightly on there as well. So a little bit more on the pinky side, but I think that's okay. All right. We are going to go in with a little bit of blush, the Sweet Enough, and see if that is actually just enough of a blush with my powder and blush brush from MAC. The lip is, again, the focus, so I'm a little cautious to use something like Pillow Talk, which can come across a little harsh. But you can absolutely see that she's wearing blush. So like I said, blush was kind of a big deal. All right, I'm actually gonna go in with a little bit more powder because I can see that my oils from this morning are peeking through already. 
And this is the BK Beauty 108 brush. All right, now we're gonna go into the eyes. So I'm gonna do my brows first with my usual colors. And then these are the shades that we're going to be using. Vanilla, and then we have Kid, and this one is Omega, or Omega, as some of our friends across the pond call it. So let's do our brows first, just to make sure we get the right balance. Going in with my angled Sigma brush. Just filling in any gaps. I always like to start in the middle and drag to the end and then go back to the beginning of the brow because I don't want like a 90s brow, especially with this look. I want to make sure it's a little bit more true to Judy Garland. All right. We're going to go in with our 201 with vanilla. I'm just going to put that all over the lid. And I'm going to do some here. I remember watching Easter Parade so many times. And it just awakened my imagination. And it's something that just really started a lifelong love of musicals and dancing and being on stage and things like that. So that was basically the side of my brush with the 201 and the vanilla. Now I'm going to use the tip of my brush into Kid. Actually, I'm going to mix Kid and Omega together. It's interesting, I was looking at photos yesterday of Judy Garland's makeup and I I have in my head a picture of what she looked like from when I was a kid and I was really shocked that she was wearing basically no eye makeup that that just wasn't it just wasn't what they did okay going in with the 217 same thing just want to build it up just a little bit but not too much because it really really doesn't look like she's wearing very much eyeshadow even when she does become a star she just keeps it really nice and fresh with her lipstick look and she's definitely not wearing any kind of liner but because I am going to be doing some mascara. I'm going to put just a little bit of charcoal brown on a pencil brush and just really, really lightly go along the lash line. Only because I know for me when I put on mascara, if I don't have liner, it looks a little goofy. And then we can kind of soften that up. Pencil brushes are so great for just kind of plopping product down and then using another brush to blend out. They're kind of like a placement brush. And I'm just taking a 217 and really gently just going back and forth, back and forth to blend that out. Doing the same thing on the other side, just getting right into the roots on the tip of my pencil brush. Going back in with the 217 and just really lightly blending that out. All right, so our eyes look nice and awake, but it's definitely like 
really not that complicated and it's not anything that's in your face. You just, you see my eyes, you don't see my makeup kind of thing. So we are going to amp up our lashes with some liner. And then we are going to go in with Smoky Eye. And we're almost done. This is a new wand. So when you have a new wand, I feel like you really, really want to get into the roots of your lashes because you got this lovely, fresh mascara wand. Don't waste it. <laughs> like, what a difference, right? Just by adding a little bit of that black against the eye, it just makes a huge difference. And you just keep going as always, until you get to that point where it's like, mm, should stop now. And then we will check our powder situation. That powder was really, really thick that they used to use. And that was their foundation. It was a powder foundation for a long time. All right. We are gonna check ourselves in the mirror and again, I'm just going to powder real quick on the tip of my nose, on my chin, under my eyes. So much powder. <laughs> and through my forehead. Just the hair. And we are done. Thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial. It was really special to me because not only does Judy Garland mean a lot to me personally, but also sharing Judy Garland with the person that passed away was also really special too. I do beauty videos every Friday. I do fashion videos on Mondays and Wednesdays and sometimes book reviews as well. So please hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, and I'll see you very soon in the next video. Bye.